simply learn. Your pace, your place. Certified Information Systems Auditor, CISA. CISA 2012 Curriculum, Domain 5. Introduction. Hello once again and welcome to the fifth and last part of the CISA course by Simply Learn. In the previous sections, we looked at the process of conducting an information systems audit, including all the guiding standards, guidelines, tool techniques, and code of ethics. We then moved on to domain two of the CISA course in which we gained an understanding of the intricacies surrounding governance and management of IT. In domain three, we exhaustively tackled matters relating to information systems acquisition, development and implementation, which basically gave us an end-to-end -end perspective of how systems are introduced into an organization related risks and controls. This was followed by Domain 4, which covered information systems operations, maintenance and support. A key aspect of ensuring that IT services deliver the promised value to the business or organization. We now move on to Domain 5 of the CISA course, which is Protection of Information Assets. This domain carries the lion's share of the CISA exam mark by virtue of taking up 30% of the final CISA exam, meaning you can expect to find approximately 60 questions from this area in the final CISA exam. Let's move to the next slide for a rundown of what we expect to cover in Domain 5. This is the Agenda section. Agenda we will begin with an overview of Domain 5, which in a nutshell, will involve getting an understanding of what Domain 5 is all about. This will be followed by a look into the objective of the domain. Domain 5 tasks and knowledge statements will highlight key aspects to be covered in Domain 5. To facilitate better learning, a list of additional study resources is provided for further reading and referencing. This will take us into the actual content for Domain 5. Domain 5 content begins with a look into the design, implementation and monitoring of security controls. It is then followed by an understanding of how to monitor and respond to security incidents. We will then cover logical access controls, followed closely by a topic which is 